welcome to this very special broadcast here on India Today. I'm Shiv Arul. There is so much that is uncertain in the world and especially for us here in India as we see the peak of this pandemic. What is certain is that India needs to prepare to bounce back. The economy needs to pick up and India needs to be fueled to get back on its feet with everything becoming active again. But how is that going to happen? And does India now stand presented with a unique opportunity to shift away from history and transfer from dependence on the conventional energy that we've already always been dependent on to cleaner and much more sustainable green energy? As India fights the COVID-19 pandemic, there's a huge opportunity amidst the crisis. An opportunity India cannot afford to miss. A chance to shift gears to cleaner energy. A key post-COVID lesson for India is to move towards renewable energy in a much more accelerated manner. There has to be a political will to settle this. So we need to make sure that good policies do not get stalled in order to protect inefficiencies. For a country that overwhelmingly runs on fossil fuels, can India flip the switch on clean renewable energy? Does the pandemic afford the Modi government a monumental chance? Is post-COVID India cleaner, greener and more energy secure? Is COVID-19 India's big clean energy ultimatum? It's a very simple question really. Overwhelmingly dependent on fossil fuels for energy. Is this a unique opportunity, this pandemic, for India to reboot revise itself and reform towards much more sustainable renewable energy going forward and will this window of opportunity dissipate if india doesn't act soon very happy to be joined today on this special show and discussion by ratul puri chairman hindustan power projects he's with us aparna roy is the lead on climate change and the energy program at the observer research foundation and we have ranjit gupta who's the ceo of one of india's largest solar power companies companies Asia Power. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for your time on this extremely important discussion. This truly does involve us all, doesn't it? Ratul, I want to start with you and I want to start with something that's immediately quantifiable. The 90,000 crore rupee, uh, you know, liquidity relief that the government has given to the power sector now. Uh, now we, you know, we do know that Ratul, India is overwhelmingly dependent on fossil fuels. Is there an opportunity, Ratul, in this 90,000 crore package for renewable energy? Hello, Shiv. Uh, very good afternoon. Uh, I think the 90,000 crore package is, is a very major milestone. Uh, we have seen, ever since the implementation of Uday in 2014, yeah. you know, a gradual deterioration um, you know, in the finances and in the balance sheets of distribution companies. A number of distribution companies have reformed significantly, but a number of other distribution companies have uh, faced many, many challenges. And this 90,000 crore pa package actually provides an opportunity for these distribution companies to reboot, to do a one-time cleanup and to move forward. It allows them to clear the dues, yeah. uh, the rightful dues of uh, renewable and conventional energy generators. And a lot of these dues are, uh, are that that exist out there are of renewable generators. So it allows the clearance of the dues of renewable generators, which allows the restart of the entire uh, supply chain. So, you know, if renewable energy generators and conventional energy generators get paid, yes. they pay their supplies in turn and, it's, and it starts off the, you know, it starts a virtuous cycle and also provides capital because there is so much of capital. This is $15 billion of capital that is stuck from the side of generators, much needed capital that is stuck, you know, in receivables, yes. which once cleared out will provide, uh, you know, provide equity for these companies to invest 
uh, you know, further into into uh, into building and developing new projects. Yes. Ranjit, you run Asia Power, you know, one of India's largest solar power companies. We are talking about renewable energy here. There have been, you know, numerous bottlenecks over the years. But this current pandemic window, uh, you know, experts unanimously believe offers an opportunity for India to course correct towards renewable energy. How do you perceive this particular opportunity, Ranjit? So, uh, thanks, Shiv. Uh, I think uh, this pandemic does provide us a fabulous uh, opportunity. The current government has been very, very positive as far as the renewable energy is concerned. The Prime Minister was the first one to come out and say that the India wanted to do 175,000 megawatts of renewable energy projects by 2022, which was yes. a, a major milestone at that time. And since then, the government has actually in increased it. The, the target to 450,000 megawatts by 2030. Hmm. But this pandemic is really, uh, you know, about a lot of other things. For example, the drain on our forex uh, from, you know, buying energy from outside, whether it is coal, whether it is oil, whether That's it is true. gas. And renewable energy will help us save that money from uh, you know uh, you know which we which we send out of the country. Yes. So that's a big uh, you know opportunity for us. Also, manufacturing in India for the solar panels yes. and for the other solar equipment, which is currently manufactured outside the country. This is also a great opportunity for the government to push this through and make sure that we start manufacturing in India. So from both the clean environment perspective, yeah. Yeah. from the foreign exchange perspective, from manufacturing in India perspective, it's a huge opportunity. Okay. Aparna, uh, you know, you've written papers that the government does read as far as clean energy and the imperative is concerned. Can you tell us about India's commitments, India's commitments to clean energy, climate change, and how they align with this opportunity for the Indian government and Indian industry to completely realign itself towards clean and renewable energy sources? Yeah. Uh, Shiv, so I'll, uh, you know, start the answer by with a question that does India have an option uh, now to not hmm. put push itself towards greener energy transition, especially with the lessons that the pandemic has offered us? So the pandemic has demonstrated more than ever that the core aspect of development, which is energy access and security, is central to crisis response and is central to our resilience as societies, as economy. Yes. And it also kind of exposed the fundamental weakness with the uh, global supply chain and how volatile the energy markets are. Now, what are the imperatives? So India is an energy scarce uh, region and 200 million uh, uh, population in India still lacks access to electricity. Yes. And uh, India's ener energy consumption is set to grow um, uh, significantly by 4.2% a year by 2035, which mm. is very soon and, um, which is, and which will be faster among all major significant economies. And uh, the dependence on fossil fuels, especially coal and oil, is uh, going to reduce significantly by 2030. Yeah. And uh, but still, it will meet 50 percent of India's energy need. Now there are two things here. So 50 percent of India's energy need is projected to be met by um, uh, non-fossil fuel sources, for example, solar PV. Mm -hmm. And the other 50 percent is. Um, to be, we are, we are going to still uh, uh, be dependent on coal. Yes. Uh, but. Uh, you know, uh, so if we are dependent on coal by 2040, India anyway is uh, you know one of the major contributors to uh, 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 to emissions. Absolutely. And, you know that will kind of increase, keep increasing significantly, and the power sector would be responsible for 80 percent of India's total carbon emission. Okay. So uh, they were contributing to another serious threat, which is climate change. So I think with this imperative, India doesn't have an option, but an opportunity. Okay, I mean, that's a very that's option, a very interesting picture that you paint. That this is not so much an important. It's not just an imperative, but there is no real option. I want to take you know all of these points one by one, so you know we can make this discussion as actionable as possible. Uh, you know, the, the government will be watching this show as well, and hopefully they can pick up some pointers from this. Ratul, the legal aspects, you know, the, the legislative framework, is it renewable energy friendly? I'm talking about the National Tariff Act, the Electricity Act, are there immediate changes required to the legislative structures, uh, you know, to make things more aligned towards renewable energy? No, certainly. I think uh, one of the key areas 
appears, uh, uh, you know, as we look at the implementation of renewable energy and we look at the enhanced cost of renewable energy relative to conventional energy. Yes. Notwithstanding the lower headline tariff of renewable energy, there is an enhanced cost of renewable energy as compared to conventional energy. A big part about lowering that cost is, is in lowering risk. Uh, and one of the ways the government can lower risk is to make certain that legislation comes in that correctly apportions risk, developmental risks, and risks across the life cycle of an asset. Right. Uh, you remember when an investor is investing into a renewable project, an investor is investing into an infrastructure asset, he's looking at generating a return over a 20, 25, 30 year period. Hmm. You need very, very robust, uh, uh, you need both a very robust legal framework, a very predictive um, uh, legislative process in order to, to give investors sufficient comfort to invest uh, into projects that have a 20, 25 year payback. Uh, I think the, you know, as we are looking at it today, I think the government is using, yeah. uh, Ranjit said the government has been very proactive. I would fully agree with him on that. I think the government has been very proactive over the last couple of months as we look at, you know, in the, in, in, in the COVID environment hmm. to try to both push through reforms and to use this opportunity to bring, uh, to, to make the changes necessary to make the sector more friendly towards investors. Yeah. Modif there are some key modifications to the Lexity Act, including, uh, you know, wh what I think is could potentially be a game changer, which is a a, a, a dispute, a new dispute resolution uh, framework, hmm. and key changes to the national tariff policy. You know, which can significantly, uh, uh, you know, increase and improve the implementation of renewables. Yeah. Ranjit, uh, yeah. On a point that was... Yes. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, complete, complete, Ratul, yeah. You know, on a point that uh, that was made by Aparna, I think, you know, we are at, point, we are at an inflection point. Yeah. There is, uh, you know, there's no better feeling than being able to, you know, go out go out in the evening in Delhi at, you know, we, I think many of us are, are citizens of Delhi, to be able to go out in Delhi, you know, in the evening at five o'clock and, you know, be able to breathe the air and walk Truly. the streets. You know, that is a very, very good feeling. I think no better... No better advertisement for uh, you know clean uh, you know clean energy certainly well than said. you know what's happened with COVID over the last month and a half. As a citizen of Delhi, as a citizen of India, yeah. I certainly want to you know I I, I I want a clean climate. I want you know I want I want, I want to breathe clean air. So you know this is you know an added you know beyond the economic uh, reasons, beyond the reasons mm. uh, for the very very obvious risks around climate change, the obvious risks that we are facing. You know, uh, you know, a uh, global risk that we are facing. You know, as a society, as a people. Yeah. I think you know this is certainly. Uh, you know, I think this is a very, very immediate, tangible uh, benefit to, uh, to to pushing and implementing. Uh, you know, more climate. Uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, no, I'm, I'm very glad. Friendly, I'm uh, very glad, Ratul, that you said that. You know, quality of life, health. Uh, you know, uh, humanity is getting this very rare preview of what life would be like, you know, if renewable energy had primacy of place. And I'm very glad you mentioned that. Ranjit, uh, you know, as your company makes solar panels, solar cells, uh, you know, it is common knowledge that one of the biggest pushbacks, uh, uh, you know, in the embracing of solar power has been, uh, you know, the cost of acquisition, the capital cost of, you know, buying solar panels. Is there an opportunity for that here? Because, you know, we've heard experts say, for many years now, if not decades, that there is an opportunity, uh, you know, to create a lot of power using, uh, you know, using solar panels in industrial clusters, in cities, even in rural areas, even at the very basic rural healthcare level. Could some of the relief packages being infused by the government somehow be infused into creating space for solar power? No, so, uh, uh, Shiv, the fact is that, uh, like both Rathul and uh, Apana pointed out, renewable energy is an imperative, yeah. right? And the government is doing a lot to push renewable energy. As far as the, uh, you know, just like uh, Rathul mentioned, one of the key factors is the security of investment, yes. right? If we want to meet the government's goal of getting to 450,000 megawatts by 2030, that will entail uh, investment of almost 18 to 20 billion dollars into solar or wind projects every year. Yeah. A majority of this money will come from foreign investors. And foreign investors need certainty of return because these projects 
are 25 year projects so you know the framework that uh, uh, that we are speaking about which is the electricity act the government has just announced that the tariff policy has been passed by the cabinet it will soon be released the electricity act amendment which is underway these are very welcome measures to give confidence to the to the investors as far as bringing solar manufacturing into the country is concerned this is a great opportunity the world is turning away from china yes india can certainly be uh, doing work not only for ourselves these processes are fully automated i mean you know the process of uh, of making these panels i mean ratul's company was one of the pioneers in uh, in manufacturing uh, solar cells and, uh, and panels and uh, you know it's it's a very automated uh, automated uh, kind of a uh, manufacturing process yes and the government can do a uh, can can do a lot more on that front the the work has started they have started this uh, process and we hope that the the covid situation hmm. will spur them into further action and we will see manufacturing happening in india okay and solar installation happening in india 450000 megawatts by 2030 aparna uh, you know uh, all of that is going to have to depend on an investor friendly framework foreign investors are going to have to uh, you know see predictability in a power sector that has largely been quite unpredictable in this country we do know that the government has you know various departments like both ratul and uh, ranjit who are in this and interface with the government uh, you know they say that the government is doing a lot what more needs to be done obviously this is a very long journey as far as the investor atmosphere is concerned is the government cognizant and doing enough there uh well i have a different perspective here i think the government has um uh has a lot of ambition and uh, which is a good framework for uh, investment we yes. like uh, in case of solar we uh, for example we 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 are we all of us agree to the fact that it's a huge opportunity for solar manufacturing sector yes. to kind of invest and uh, boost the domestic manu you know domestic manufacturing especially after uh, uh, our prime minister announced the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan so we want to so looking at the disruption that the pandemic has caused in the supply chain uh, uh, so uh, you know we, i mean that's a good opportunity but the yes. problem here is that i see that there's still a lot of effort that is required from the government side so for example we are so optimistic about the solar energy uh, you know uh, having a diversified solar manufacturing base here in india mm. but do we have a you know policy framework uh, uh, do we have the core competence do we have the capital and uh, do we have uh, the capacity required to kind of offer a domestic manufacturing base at a, i mean that can substitute for the scale at which we uh, uh, you know import um, uh, solar components yes. from uh, china so um, i think there is uh, absolutely there the government needs to first have a policy framework aimed at creating a diversified solar manufacturing base that could ensure Sure, uh, that could kind of significantly report, uh, reduce our import uh, dependence, ensure self-sufficiency, and uh, um, and greater employment opportunity. The second yes. one is that we, uh, you know, I think in the entire solar manufacturing um, process, India uh, lacks the kind of uh, you know uh, technology uh, uh, skills and core competence required in the manufacturing process. So India was only involved. I mean, most of the companies here are involved in module assembly, but kind. Kind of are not involved in polysilicon wafer cell uh, um, manufacturing etc so those kind of skill set you know a lot of skill development program has to come up okay. from uh, mnre's uh, national institute of solar energy to kind of uh, uh, you know make uh, i mean kind of train our own uh, uh, people with the skills okay. and technology know how so, that is required for uh, this kind of manufacturing so so the one thing that's pretty clear is that this has to be an in integrated approach you know whether it is immediate decision medium term decisions legislative tweaks uh, you know uh, investment climate decisions this is obviously not one flip of a switch and things just change automatically this is going to be uh, something that has to happen at many different levels uh, you know someone who runs a company if there were two or three things that you could prescribe to the government to act right now what would those be there is always a talk about vision and the long term and the medium term i think your question is very to the point what can be done in the short term to take advantage uh, of the situation and in the short term the tariff policy is done the relief to the distribution companies is is done 
the Electricity Act needs to be pushed through in the next two or three months. Hopefully, in the monsoon session, we'll see action on the Electricity Act. These three will be major, uh, major, major, uh, you know, uh, stepping stones. The big thing for the power sector as a whole is the health of the distribution companies. And the health of distribution companies, currently the way things are, will need political will at the end of the states. Right, the center has been trying and has done a lot, but the states also need to, uh, you know, need to step up and do what is required to to repair sort of the health of the distribution companies. And hopefully, through the amendments in the Electricity Act, we will see some measures yes. which will help the states take those uh, take those actions. Right. So the whole system, whether it is generation, whether it is transmission, at the end of the day. The distribution company has to be healthy. Yes. Unless and until they are healthy, the sector cannot move forward, and neither can the investors be comfortable to invest. Right. So that is the key key thing that needs to happen for the sector, where the distribution companies are healthy. Ratul, your prescriptions, if you could give them to us for the short term for the government. Sure, sure. Uh, so you know, I was going back to the manufacturing side. I think the implementation of the anti-dumping. That was done last year, you know, is is very positive for the manufacturing of solar panels in the country, and I think we have seen, you know, an, uh, you, you know, investment picking up in that area. Uh, to the point, Ranjit made eventually the, you know, the weakest chain in this entire, the weakest link in this entire chain is the distribution companies. Yes, I think if we are able to address the challenges of distribution companies, uh, we would have gone you know we, we would significantly change the risk profile of this sector uh, and uh, you know there is I, I do see certainly see I mean in this government I see the political will you know both at the center and across a number of states to go out and make the necessary changes in distribution companies you know so I think that that would be the you know the one area where I would uh, where I believe there is more focus needed. Yes. Uh, because the political will is there. If we can go in and make the changes in the distribution companies, I think there will be you know it, it, we would see a completely reinvigorated sector. Okay. It's just some of the recent announcements around the you know saying that we will go in and look at uh, some of the union territories and look at a privatization model. You know that's after a gap of almost ten years yes. where you know the government is again looking at privatization. Beyond looking at just a franchisee model or picking, you know, a small part of a state to go in and say, you know, I'm looking at a, you know, full bold privatization model once again. I think that is, uh, you know, again a very positive move. Uh, so I think there have been many, many very positive move, okay. you know, moves in the last two to three months. You know, this is, you know, the the, the overall electricity sector has certainly been a, you know, a sector that has benefited by you know, positive uh, changes the government has done. Okay. Uh, and I think we, we just need a follow through on this, you know, as we go forward. We okay. don't want, you know, the, we don't want there to be, if we treat this as Uday 2, we don't want to be sitting five years from today on Uday 3. Absolutely. This is, you know, this is a very hopeful discussion. It's been very enlightening as well. And I hope all stakeholders, including the government, industry, the companies have all been listening. There's a great deal that's been done. There's a great deal to look forward to, but it's a long road ahead. Let's hope this all fructifies into an integrated and committed Swatch Energy mission for the country. Ratul, Ranjit and Aparna, a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us here on India Today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hi everyone, Preeti Chaudhary here. Hope you like this video. For latest news and analysis, like and subscribe to the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated. Thank you for watching.